Hello and welcome to 8-3 Notes where we're focusing on linear functions. A linear equation is an equation whose graph is a line. A linear equation is also a function. This is because each member of the domain remember domain is X, the number you're putting in, is paired with exactly one member of the range. And the range is the Y, what's getting spit out. The solution of an equation with two variables will consist of two numbers that make the equation true. One way to find these numbers is by making a table. So let me show you what that looks like. Below, find five solutions for each equation. Write the solution as ordered pairs and then graph them on the coordinate plane. All right, notice here we have two variables. We have the variable of y and the variable of x. So this is our domain. We're gonna plug in our numbers here. Let's, uh, let's I'm gonna put zero in the middle and then I'm going to go 2 negative and then go 2 positive. I am just picking numbers here. And then we're going to find out what that's going to spit out, which is our y value, also known as the range. So y equals, when I plug in negative 2 for x, I'm plugging it in right here, adding 2, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So the ordered pair that this makes is negative 2, 0. Now let's plug in negative 1 for x. In place of x, I plugged in negative 1. Negative 1 plus 2. Remember, you're going to subtract and keep the sign of the larger value, which is 2. So the ordered pair here is negative 1, 1. And we'll keep on trucking, plugging in 0, which is going to give us 2. 0, 2 is the ordered pair. 1 plus 2 is 3. So we have 1 and 3 as an ordered pair. And 2 plus 2 is 4. <clears throat> 2, 4 is our ordered pair. Now let's go down below and let's graph our ordered pairs. Negative 2, 0. Negative 1, 1. 0, 1, 2. 1, 3. And 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Notice, and if you get a straight edge, it'll help a whole lot, that this is a line. I do not have a straight edge, so I'm going to try my best. So if you want to be neat, you need a straight edge to connect the points. It makes a line. That's why it is a linear function. Let's go back to what we learned yesterday about functions. Every x has only one y. And if we applied our vertical line test here, let's pick a new color, how about yellow? If I draw a vertical line, it touches it only at one point, anywhere I pick to draw a vertical line. So it passes the vertical line test. All right, I'd love it if you would try the second example without me. So pause here um, and do the second example. Hopefully, you did do the second example first before you hit play. I am going to continue to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, just so I have some numbers to the left of the y-axis. Uh, it gives us a better um, line. So I'm plugging in negative 2 for x. This gives me negative 8. Remember, you have to multiply before you add opposite sign, so I'm going to subtract and keep, keep the sign of the larger number. Negative 2, negative 5. Y equals 4 times negative 1 plus 3, so it's going to be negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 1. So negative 1, negative 1. 0, 4 times 0, anything times 0 is 0. So 0 plus 3 is going to give us 3. And then 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7. This is supposed to be a 1. And y equals 4 times 2, plus 3, and that's going to be 8, plus 3. 
which is 11. So we have 2, 11. And we're going to come down. All right, we're ready. Okay, so as we plot our points, we're at negative 2, negative 5, negative 1, negative 1, 0 goes up positive 3, 1 jumps up positive 7, so we run off of our um, graph here. So with my straight edge, I am going to connect the points and make a straight line. That's why this is a linear function. All right, scroll down to the bottom of your page. When we are working with a more complex equation, it is often helpful to rearrange the equation where y is on one side all alone. We call that isolate the y, and everything else is on the other side. So let's look at example two where we need to rearrange each equation to isolate y. So we've already covered how to solve simple two-step equations. So if I want y to be left alone on the left side of the equation, I would subtract 8x from both sides. All right, be careful now. Watch what happens. There is not another x term. So when we talk about having like terms, there's not a like term here. You'll end up with 20 minus 8x because you cannot combine did you hear me? You cannot combine 20 and 8x because 20 does not have an x. That's like having cucumbers and bell peppers. We can't combine those. They're not alike. So now um, you are ready. Your equation is ready to plug in values for x to find out y. Some people may have said negative 8x. They like to work with their x first plus 20. The negative is because we subtracted 8x. The plus is because our 20 is positive. So either way you write that equation is correct. Now, okay, example B. When we look to isolate y in example B, there's a little bit of a problem because we have 2 being multiplied times y. First thing we need to do is still subtract x from both sides. So that cancels, and we have 2y equals 4 minus x. Those are not like terms, so we cannot combine them. And then we've already reviewed the golden rule of algebra. Whatever you do to one side of an equation, you have to not only do it to the other side of the equation, but you have to do it to everybody. I can't um, divide y by 2 and not divide 4 by 2 and also divide x by 2. You have to divide everything by 2. This isolates y. So y equals, oh, 2 goes into 4 2 times. And another way to write negative x over 2, there's an understood 1 in front of the x. So it's negative 1 half x. Now think about that. You're taking half of x, x divided by 2. Do you take half of a candy bar or do you divide the candy bar by 2? It's the same thing. So it, for linear functions, it's going to be nice to put the fraction in front of the x. So this is your answer. Or, of course, you could have it rearranged where the negative 1 half x is in front of 2. Later on, you're going to find out this is our preferred format, but for today's lesson, I will accept either one till you get comfortable, uh, and then we'll work on rearranging. All right, flip your paper over to the back. I have said over and over in class that um, life is not going to come to you as an algebra equation, but rather it's going to come to you in words or real life situations where an algebraic equation can be used. So when you're dealing with an algebraic equation in real life situations, make sure here you go. Make sure your solution makes sense. Sometimes you think you've set it up algebraically, but if you look at your answer, you go back and say, hey, that doesn't make sense. For example, if we're dealing with length and you have a negative answer, you can't have a negative length. That's just one example that comes to mind. So let's look at example three together. Jim and his friend, they have a total of $9 to spend at Mazatlan. Oh, a Mexican restaurant. My favorite one's Mazatlan. Anyway, a burrito is two dollars and a taco costs one dollar. Write an equation to represent the situation that we're discussing and then find three possible solutions. So first we have to write an e Okay, so our job first is to write an equation. So let's go back and review. Jim and his friend have a total of nine dollars that they're going to spend at the restaurant. A burrito is 
$2. Well, we don't know how many burritos they want to buy, so we could just make burrito be our X value. And then they are also going to buy a taco. We don't know how many tacos they're going to buy, which could be our Y value. And tacos cost $1. So I don't know how many burritos, but I've got to multiply the number of burritos. X is the number of burritos they buy. I'll have to multiply that times two dollars. And Y stands for the number of tacos they're gonna buy. And they have a total to spend, they can't go over nine dollars. So when we set up our equation, X plus y, don't forget, burritos are $2, tacos are $1. When you, however many they order, they can't spend more than $9. So there is our equation. If we take out the dollar signs, that's 2x plus y equals 9. To isolate our y, we would subtract 2x, and y equals 9 minus 2x. Then it asks us to give some possible solutions, find three solutions. In other words, they can mix it up. They can buy more burritos the first time they go or more tacos the next time they go. So we're trying to find out um, how many of each they can, they can get with their $9. So if we make a table, and forgive me, I'm going to come over here to the left x and our equation is y equals 9 minus 2x and it says to give three solutions so what if they don't buy any uh, burritos well if they don't buy any burritos 9 minus 2 times 0 9 minus 0 is 9 they can buy nine tacos of course they can they're a dollar each and they have nine dollars so there's one possible solution so you would write that as an ordered pair, zero, 09. Then, what if we buy one burrito? Well, nine minus two times one, that one burrito was two dollars, so it leaves them with seven tacos they can buy. They get one burrito, there's seven tacos. Well, maybe Jim said, hey, I want a burrito too, so what if he buys two burritos? Then how many tacos can they split? So that's going to be 9 minus 4, because 2 times 2 is 4. So they can split 5 tacos. They're not going to be able to split those evenly unless they get a knife and cut one in half. All right. So there's an example of how you could take a real-life situation, make it into a linear equation, uh, and then actually make an xy graph, or not, yeah, table here, make an xy table to solve for possible solutions. And you all have done this type of math all the time and you, didn't, you did not even realize you were doing algebra. You had $9 and you were trying to decide, what do I wanna buy? How many of each can I buy? All right, I'm gonna stop my video here and we will continue this in class tomorrow. You all have a great day.